Praise the name of the Lord. Um, amen. While still standing, let me just convey my gratitude to the entire Christian community of this wonderful island. I have been absolutely amazed at the love, the warmth, the hospitality. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hallelujah. Second, let me honor all of the spiritual leaders. I had the man of God introducing and celebrating them. I'm sent to the body of Christ. So every time um, I have the privilege of being around an atmosphere where there are several pastors, men and women of God, cutting across several denominations, my heart is gladdened. And I honor every one of you, uh, particularly the servants of God. I believe that many of them are represented here. The Lord bless you. We truly honor you in the name of Jesus. And then, if you will allow me just to honor the host pastor of the church that has allowed the use of the auditorium, we honor you, we bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I know that every time spent in his presence, if it is truly his presence, he comes to transform, he comes to change, he comes to lift. One thing I can tell you for sure is that your life will never be the same. Yeah. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like all of us to lift our hands to Jesus all over this auditorium and those connecting online. And let's cry for an encounter tonight. Open my eyes that I may see. Open my ears that I may hear. Please pray, let it be from the depth of your heart. Are you praying? Father, give me an encounter tonight and all through this conference. Shilakata pranda gadabala siyada. I have come with my heart opened. Send your word. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Just two things very quickly and then we'll sit down. Um, Number one, I'd like you to be very sensitive. In Genesis chapter 28, the Bible says how that Jacob came and found a place in the night to sleep. He set a stone there and began to sleep. And as he lay to sleep, the Bible says he saw a ladder that connected the heaven and the earth. He saw angels ascending and descending but the Bible never said they were coming to him. They were passing him and going to those who were calling them. He was there. And yet they were moving angelic activities. But he did not benefit from it. And when he woke up, he said, Surely the Lord was in this place. And I knew not. He said, This is the house of God, the gates of heaven. He learned his lesson. Then when we get to chapter 32... God would come again. This time around, he held on to him and said, I made that mistake before. I will not make it again. I will not let you go unless you bless me. He said, leave me for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let you go. Then he says, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob. For as a prince, you have had power with God and prevailed. He touched the hollow of his thigh 
and blessed him the sun arose and he called the name of the place Peniel I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved in every meeting please listen carefully in every meeting in every conference like this there are usually two groups of people number one there are those who come as spectators hoping if they could learn one or two things and that disposition of pride alone will not even allow them to receive anything because the quality for reception in the spirit is meekness you receive with meekness the engrafted word then there is another group who are hungry desperate sincere passionate even though they have been helped by God in different measures they know that even in heaven you can still come up higher and so they come with their hearts opened and desperate and it's my prayer sincerely that God himself will cause all of us to be in this second group that we prepare our hearts to receive to be enlightened there is nothing that God is not able to do if we pay attention and if we listen to him. Who is like him? The lion and seated shortly, but I don't know why God does this. There are four people right now as I'm speaking. One of you, one of them will start running out by the Spirit. Just hold him and bring him out here. I don't want you to find it strange. We are believers. We believe in the full counsel of God. This is what God is showing me. The power of God will come upon one person literally. I want you to just help them. And then there are three others. In total, four people. This is what the Lord is revealing to me. Because I'm seeing even before I sit down to... Or before we sit down that the word is taught there is a hunger and a desperation that some of you have come with help them please and the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit so do not doubt the spirit the spirit is the Lord the Lord there are other spirits but this one the Lord is that spirit and you know he is that spirit because where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty please bring them out I stretch my hands by the spirit of grace that hunger that desperation in the name of Jesus Christ please whether you are an usher or not just help them help them please majesty you brought us here to change us you brought us here to lift us you will never be the same I assure you you will never never be the same not after this conference you are the covenant keeping God you are the covenant keeping God Yahweh the covenant keeping God Yahweh the covenant keeping God you are you the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. In the name of Jesus, everything that is not the planting of the Lord over this once and over any life represented here even before the word comes in the name of jesus the son of the living god may it be off from your life and destiny in the name of jesus christ and for those of you who have come i release you 
into very deep dimensions of encounters in the spirit encounters of light encounters of fire by the power of the living God I declare that your lives will never never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord bless you may the Lord lift you in Jesus name please be seated for a few minutes let's get to the word mighty God we're going to be exploring the word of God in line with the theme of your conference and whilst the word is coming I like you to please be sensitive because the Lord is going to be healing the Lord is going to be delivering the Lord is going to be setting the captives free and then he will be enlightening us through the word the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 it says arise shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light it is at the instance of God's word that we rise it is at the instance of God's word that we reign this is a kingdom that is knowledge driven please pay attention this is a kingdom that operates by light and operates by knowledge our inability to sufficiently understand the truth of scripture will short circuit the potential of the life that we have received in Christ this is very important we must understand just being born again being saved as important as it is does not automatically release in and through us the fullness of the potential of what we call eternal life it takes knowledge Ephesians 4 and verse 18 having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart so spiritual ignorance can make a man even though that man may be a believer not be able to come into the fullness of the potential of what the faith life produces Psalm 82 and verse 5 there was a lamentation there it says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high the tragedy is in the next verse it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes so even though we have been called into a life of beauty and glory a holy calling and a high calling it takes knowledge to pay attention to knowledge word conferences are feasts of the word where we receive the word access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to spiritual information that are able to build are able to mature it says and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to build you up are we together now yes to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified the word of god is very powerful while discussing the power that is in god's word we're trying to explore the riches that are captured in the word of god and we'll be very brief tonight and then we'll pray let's start from habakkuk chapter 3 habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 3 and 4 i wish we could get verse 4 in amplified but if we're unable to get it that's all right god came from teman and the holy one from mount paran his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of praise verse 4 I'd like you to please read verse 4 if you can see it projected ready let's read together one to read and his brightness was as the light and the horns coming out of his hand and there was the hiding of his power that the power of God has a location now you read amplified amplified is projected thank you media can we read again now ready one to read and his brightness 
is like the sunlight. Uh -huh. He has bright rays flashing from his hand. And there in the sun-like splendor is the hiding place of his power. The power of God has a location where it resides. The Bible says in his light. 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 Please bring the lady that shouts loud under the anointing right now to the hearing of everyone. A loud shout. This is what I heard from the Spirit. This is a ministry, an apostolic ministry. is a ministry of signs and wonders. And these things, it's not just about some Pentecostal jamboree. There is always a message in everything that God does. No, 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 no. I'm not asking you to come out at random. The power of God will bring you out. Loud shout from the congregation. The power of God will come on a lady. This is what I'm seeing. Please, when that happens, hallelujah. Pay attention. Are we, st are we still here? So the word of God is where the power of God resides and we're going to be exploring. Let's see how far we can cover for tonight. The Lord is bringing captivity to the family of that lady. This is what the Lord is telling me. Captivity comes to an end. Did the Bible not say now the Lord is that spirit I repeat and that where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. The things that we read in this Bible are not just stories. They are not just parables. If you are a man of God here, you are a minister of the gospel here. It is my prayer that in this conference you will contact the grace to represent God in reality. That we will stop advocating a theoretical God and bring to bear the reality of scripture. I write these things to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. In his presence, an age-long captivity like this, just like that, gone. This is what Jesus does. He does not just do it to show that a man of God is powerful. He does it to demonstrate the excellency of this kingdom. So when you tell someone, come to Jesus, you are not advocating a religion. No, you are telling him, I am advocating a life that is superior. And whose superiority can be proven here and now. Are we blessed? John chapter 1 verse 1. What is the word of God? Let us begin by discussing the word of God. John, Apostle John. Now, please look up. Theologically speaking, the Gospels are divided into four. We call them the synoptic accounts. These were all eyewitness accounts. Let me just minister to this gentleman. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands and I declare, let captivity over his life and family come to an end. All right, so let's continue. Now, John chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible says, In the beginning, it was only Apostle John who began his discourse from the divinity of Christ. When you read other synoptics, some of them started from an archaeological standpoint. Others started from a historic standpoint with the census that was going on in the days of Jesus. Are we together? Others started like Mark, straight from the miracles. But it was John that approached his synoptic account from the standpoint of the divinity of Christ. He traced it down to the beginning. So having that in mind, let's read John 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. He says, and the word was with God. And the word was God. Now, very instructive statement. The word was with God. The word was God. Verse 2. The Bible says the same, the word now, was with God in the beginning. 
And then a very interesting rendition, verse 3, and then we'll pause for now. It says, all things, how many things? All things were made by him, not it, him. So we see the first expression of the word being personified. That the word is not just a book. He's talking about the word of God. And he's saying that, please give it to us now. Verse 3. All things were made by him. And without him, that means outside of him, was not anything made that was made. All things were made by him. And if you ever see anything that was made, he was the one who made it. The word of God. For many people, we pick up a Bible like this and we say this is the word of God. Generally speaking, we are right. In that it's a book that was inspired. The Bible says all scripture was inspired of the Holy Spirit. That holy men wrote as they were moved by the Spirit. Are we together? But in reality, this was a book that was published by a book publishing house. It is possible that the publisher of this book is not even born again. Are we together now? Yes. In this Bible, demons spoke. In this Bible, God spoke. In this Bible, animals spoke. Are we together? In this Bible, men spoke in the depravity of their hearts. In this Bible, men spoke from a standpoint of repentance. In this Bible, God spoke from the standpoint of his strength and majesty. So what exactly is the word of God? It is important that we understand what the word of God is. What is the word of God? That is so important, the Bible says all things happens at the instance of that word. What then is the word of God? But you see, even before we begin to discuss the subject, please look up, please pay attention. Even before we begin to discuss the subject of the word of God, our first port of call is God himself. You see, if your study of scripture and your pursuit of the knowledge of scripture is isolated from the larger picture of trying to know God, study of scripture will not profit you. The study of scripture should be a derivative of a bigger appetite and a bigger agenda. That is to know God. It is the passion to know God that now drives you to begin to make reference to this material. Are we together now? Yes. John 17 from verse 3. This is the Lord's prayer. Jesus is praying. He said, this is life eternal. That they may know thee. Not just to know about thee. That they may know thee. The only one true God. And Jesus whom thou hast sent. So our highest pursuit. Listen carefully. Is not just to study scripture. It's not just to cram verses. It's not just to feel religious about holding a book. Or an iPad that contains a Christian material. The highest desire must be to know God himself. There are many people who have read this book and it did not change them because the desire was not to know God. The desire was to find controversial statements and accuse the faith work. There are people who have studied this as part of their thesis for an educational certification. Just because you open and study does not mean it will profit you. The desire must be God himself. And see, the, the way it works in this kingdom is that whatever else you seek, good or bad, if it rises above your knowledge and your passion and your desire for God, it is idolatry. If you seek anointing above God, it is idolatry. If you seek angels above God, it is idolatry. You seek signs and wonders above God. These are positive things. The jealousy of God does not allow him to contest with anything at all in your heart. Every other thing finds its credence 
when God is first and God is priority. Are we still together? So as we discuss the idea of the word of God, it's important for you to not limit your mind to just okay let me learn this so that I can go and get results let me learn this so that I can administer healing those things are wonderful but it starts with God the rule is in the beginning God that must be the formula that must be maintained in the beginning of your spiritual pursuit God not miracles not anointing not breakthroughs these things are not wrong you've already seen God visit, visiting his people in the beginning the accurate posture that makes scripture to come alive and the understanding of scripture profitable is when your heart is on God, not Bible. When your heart is on God, not heaven. When your heart is on, if you worship the throne that God is sitting on, is still idolatry. We don't worship the throne. It's him that sits on the throne. Are we together? Because there are many believers who are word addicts. They really have passion for scripture. But the motivation behind it is just to find the principles therein and obtain results that are isolated from the knowledge of God. Eventually, you will meet with destruction on the way. Are we together? Yeah. Unbelievers, without giving their lives to Christ, can sit down under a conference like this and learn the principles of the kingdom and use those principles even refusing to acknowledge the lordship of Christ and it will work for them because there is a dimension of God's power that is invested in his laws and principles they will not acknowledge the God but they will use his principles to get results even if an armed robber goes to the farm to farm, it will produce. Because the law of seed time and harvest is still at work. It does not depend on a relationship. It just depends on obedience to the principle. So, before we begin to discuss this, I have an assignment to redirect your focus to him that sits on the throne, not a book. From the standpoint of him who sits on the throne, we now begin to follow the road map that he has created. So when we search for scripture and we explore the knowledge of the word, it is ultimately to the end that it, it revolves back to him who sits upon the throne. Are we together? This is what makes the Christian experience profitable. You will be surprised that a time can come in your Christian experience where as far as spiritual activities are concerned, you are not failing in it and yet your relationship is not growing your knowledge of scripture is increasing but because your motivation was never him your motivation was just principles principles are powerful but principles are secondary it is in the beginning God all the people who wrote this they did not start by looking for a book they started by pursuing a man. It was their pursuit of that man that led to the book that we now read. Right after an encounter, John, you have now encountered me. Now write. The words that have come from that encounter, they are faithful and they are true. Are we blessed? So it must be God. And when I say God, I'm speaking to a global audience. There are people connecting from all over. When we say God, we refer to the God of the Bible. The almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. The one who came and manifested as the word made flesh, Jesus. In the beginning, God. Whilst you're seated, I want you to pray a prayer. Lord, everything that is not you and has been exalted in my life, I dethrone it in this conference. I redirect and reorder my passion more than Bible study, more than prayer meeting. All these are a means to an end. The end is you. The end of a believer's journey is not prayer. The end of a believer's journey is not Bible study. The end of a believer's journey is not worship. The end of a believer's journey is not giving. 
the end of a believer's journey is the knowledge of God all those things become keys that help us to know him and then excel in life are you praying lift your voice and pray to know you genuinely sincerely to know you to have an encounter with you In the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. Let's hurry up. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. Paul mentoring the church in Philippi. He was so broken by his passion to know God. Here's what he said. That I may know him. This was a man who wrote two thirds of the New Testament. This was one who even before his conversion, he was a Pharisee. Did you see? As a Pharisee, he was not bankrupt of scripture. He had scripture. But he did not know the God of the Bible. It was whilst he was going to persecute the church that he had an encounter. The Bible says he met this light that we call Jesus. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. You're the light of my life, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. A man who was full of scripture and yet did not know God. You could not stand with Paul to debate on scripture. He was a Pharisee. Did you know that the scribes and the Pharisees, the condition for them to be scribes and Pharisees among other things is that they had to learn the five books of Moses. They knew the Torah of heart. Even Satan knows scripture. But does, it doesn't mean he has a relationship with God. The blind knowledge of scripture does not automatically equate to a relationship. It is written. Satan is speaking. It starts with a relationship. Not an archaeological search. For scripture. So Paul is having an encounter. And he looked at him and said. Saul, Saul. Why persecutest thou me? He had memory verses in his head, but there was no relationship. Who art thou, Lord? He said. He said, I am the one who you are persecuting. Even though you seem to have information that talks about me, you have not met me. He said, you cannot kick against the bricks. And that began the journey of this ignorant but knowledgeable Pharisee who would later become an apostle of the Lamb. Then now please go back to chapter 3 and verse 10. Now you will understand what he said. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. Here's what he said. That I may know him. I have known about him. I have known the books that were written of him. But now I want to know him. And the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his suffering. Being made conformable unto his death that I may know him. Please write this down. There are four biblical platforms. Four biblical platforms. I'll just touch on it and then we'll really go into the matter for tonight. Wherever we stop, we'll pray and continue. There are four biblical platforms that have been provided to help men know God. Four. Number one, the first biblical platform that can help any man know God is scripture. Write it down, please. Scripture. That means you can see someone who maybe is an unbeliever or an atheist. And then you lead that person to Christ. You can give the person scripture. And with the correct understanding, he can use scripture to know God. Number two. I just thought to touch on that very quickly. Number two, you know God through his names. The names of God are a capture of the different dimensions of God's power and ability. You see, when you study scripture, you learn the character of God. 
and you learn his methodologies. When you study scripture, scripture reveals the character of God. More than just verses, more than parables, more than stories. You familiarize yourself with the character of God. If you are a sound student of scripture, you should be able to discern immediately that this is not how God behaves. Because scripture opens you up to the character of God. It opens you up to the modus operandi, the methodologies of God, how God acts. Number two, the names of God. Every time they saw the mighty hand of God, they captured that experience in a name. And every time they wanted to see that dimension of God again, they would call that name. So he is Jireh. Jireh will not heal you. He will only provide. Rapha will not provide. He will only heal. Sikenu, righteousness. Are we together now? So the names of God are a revelation of different dimensions in him. He said, who should I tell Pharaoh had sent me? And then he said, I am that I am. He said, go and tell Pharaoh, I am has sent you. The third way, the third platform for knowing God is the revelation of the person, Jesus. Jesus. Hebrews chapter 1, when you read from verse 1 and 3, the Bible says, God who in sundry times and diverse manner spake to us in time past by the fathers and the prophets, he said, had in these days spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed to be heir over all things, by whom also he made the worlds. He's making reference to John 1, 1 now. Now verse 3, it says, verse 3 says, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of holding all things by the word of his power. Are you seeing that now? So Jesus came. Listen please. This is a believer's convention. Jesus did not just come to die alone. There are three major assignments of Jesus when he showed up on the earth. Number one. Jesus came as a correction of our perception about God. Until Jesus showed up, there were many things about God that the saints and even the prophets did not understand. They credited things, anything that was superhuman, they credited it to God. And so Jesus came as a correction. He came as a marking script, as a reference. Everything the Father said he was, you could compare it and see it captured in the life of Jesus. So that by looking unto Jesus, we may know the Father. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, no man cometh to the Father but by me. So no matter what it is that I think I know about the Father, I look unto Jesus to correct my perceptions. Number two, Jesus came as perfect theology. He came as the pattern man. A portrait of what can happen to a man when you walk in alignment with the Spirit of God. Jesus came as a representation of the Father's desire, what we should become. He says, as he is, so are we. He came to show us that we can walk in victory. He came to show us that the excellency of the power of God is a reality. And he demonstrated it in his earth work. And then thirdly and finally and more importantly, he came as the substitutionary sacrifice. The one who would become the mediator of the new covenant. He came as a revelation of the father's love. Demonstrated in and through his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, his enthronement. He did not just come to reconcile man alone. He came to correct our perception about God. Imagine with me for instance, let's say... There is a gentleman who is a CEO and most of the staff that work in that company, they've not been able to see the man. Anyone who claims to know the man can tell you things and say the man directed you. Is that true? But when the man sends a special envoy, that man comes as the most accurate representation of the character of that man. So you can use the person and compare. Let me give you an instance. Very humorously, many of you would have noticed I'm not on social media. And yet there are probably tens of social media pages daily. People open as me 
and sadly they can ask people for money everywhere just take advantage of the fact that people like this man of God now you are only defrauded if you do not know me when you know me for instance you can judge is this the character of this person are you getting what I'm saying now so Jesus came as a correction to what we think or thought the father was because when you read the Bible outside of the manifestation of Jesus, your conclusion would be, God, you are mysterious. Sometimes it looks like you are kind. Sometimes it looks like you are wicked. Sometimes we read scripture and we don't understand you. And Jesus said, leave the confusion. Watch my life. I am a rip. Everything you see me do is what the Father does. Whatever you did not see me do, don't let anybody tell you that's what the Father does. He came as a correction. Of our perception so for instance if you believe that it's God's will for people to remain in sickness and in poverty and in failure you don't need to create a debate look at Jesus what did Jesus do when sick people come he did not leave one to go sick so immediately we know that sickness is of the devil what did Jesus do when poor people came when poor people come to when they came around at the crusade after teaching he did not leave them hungry what happened when they tried the fishermen the businessmen who were trying to catch fish so immediately you know that the father is not only interested in your eternal salvation he's interested in your well-being jesus the correction of our perception about the father are we blessed and then the last platform to know god is called our experiences. Job chapter 42 and verse 5. Job 42 and verse 5. This introduction is very important. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. There is a dimension of the knowledge of God that only your experience can minister to you. You can ask every man of God or anyone who has lived long enough. There is a way you sing and say, Lord, you are faithful. You are not just saying it because you read it in scripture. There is a history. Your life has a track record of it. So when you are speaking, you are speaking from a standpoint of conviction. It was his faithfulness that gave you your firstborn. It was his faithfulness that delivered you from an accident. You fell at sea and yet he delivered you. So when you are saying God is faithful, you are not reciting a chorus that church people say. You have an experience. scripture the word of God now the names of God number three Jesus manifest in the flesh number four your experience these are the four biblical platforms given to help us know God so this entire conference this word conference now is speaking one of those platforms are you seeing now? So when we explore scripture, it is not only helping us to know God, but helping us to know how to use the truth of God's word to excel, to reign. But our attention will never be pegged at just reigning and ruling. It is the knowledge of God. Are we clear on that? Now please pray whilst you are seated. Lord, reveal your word to me. Reveal your word to me. Open my eyes to thee. <laughs> Reveal your word. Shilakatos Kebrandakatos Yata. Reveal your word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So write this down, please. Number one the word of God is God. What is the word of God? The word of God is is God an expression of himself we read John 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word the word was with God the word was God revelations 19 13 John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos 1913 revelation the Bible says he saw one who sat upon a white horse he said and he was clothed 19 verse 13 just leave verse 13 19 and verse 13 he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called 
the word of God. The original name of the one you know and you call Jesus. His name from the foundations of the earth was and is the word of God. The word of God. His original name. The word of God. So the word of God is an expression of God himself. Number two, what is the word of God? The word of God is a revelation of his thoughts and his character. The word of God is a revelation. Every time you talk about the word of God, you mean a compendium of God's thoughts and character. Isaiah 55 from verse 8 and 9. Isaiah 55 verse 8 and 9. Please pay attention. Isaiah 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Verse 9. It says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Now look up please. The word, word, W-O-R-D. Now, the Old Testament was written largely in Hebrew. And then the New Testament was written in a combination of Greek and Aramaic. And then with a little of Latin. Are we together now? The word, the Greek word for word, W-O-R-D, is the word logos. Logos means the thoughts or the intention of a man that seeks to find expression. Please understand this now. The essence of that word, word, it means the thoughts of a man that seeks to find expression. So when we say the word of God, we not only mean God himself, but we mean the thoughts, the intentions of God. When we call Jesus Christ the word of God, we mean that he is the living expression of the will and the intention of the Father. Everything the Father desired and desires was lived out through Jesus Christ. The word of God is a revelation of the thoughts of God. The word of God is a revelation of the intentions of God. That means if you want to know what God is thinking and if you want to know how God thinks, if you want to know what God intends for you, you can go to the word of God and you are safe. Whatever you find there. Can I tell you some of the things he has said? Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil, he says, to give you a future and an expected end. This is what God thinks about me. This is what God thinks about me. Isaiah chapter 60, 1 to 3. Arise, shine. Your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2 says, Darkness covers the earth, gross darkness the people, but upon you the glory of the Lord shall be seen. This is what God is thinking about me. Verse 3, hallelujah. He says, Gentiles will come to your light. These are the thoughts of God concerning you. And they are kings to the brightness of your rising. That's what the Bible says. For your shame you shall receive double. It says where you have been deserted so that no man would pass through you. You become an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations. Thou shalt be the head and not the tail. These are the thoughts of God. So when I study the word of God, I am acclimatizing my mind. What does God think about me? How can I enter his mind to know? The word of God is a compendium of his thoughts and his intentions. You cannot be a student of the word and be in doubt about God's plan for your life. No. His plans are clear. The reason why we doubt what God wants for our lives. Is it God's will for me to be sick? Is it God's will for me to be healthy? Is it God's will for me to prosper? Is it God's will for me to fail? All those questions are a diagnosis showing that you do not know the word of God. Because in the word of God are his thoughts There are many people who write wills, W-I-L-L. -L. They write wills, that means if I pass on, this is how my estate and my properties should be shared. Is that true? If you, usually, the man would not tell the family members, but he will capture it in a will. 
So when you carry that will, you are no longer in doubt. If for instance, it passes on and there's all kinds of confusion. This land is mine. Uh -uh. Just go and bring the will. And it is clearly stated there. This one should be given to this. The word of God is his will that he has left. It's a revelation of what he has. Listen carefully. Contains his thoughts. I know what he has said about me. His will. I know what he's thinking about me now. Nobody can preach me into believing something else. He has told me I'm the head and not the tail. It's not an opinion. It's not a suggestion. It's not a tribal wise saying. This is his thoughts. This is what he's thinking concerning me. No weapon fashion, he said. Weapons don't just come. They are fashioned. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. That's what he's thinking. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day then you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you the thoughts of God for my life. But my head as thou exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I am anointed with fresh oil. These thoughts for me. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? So you begin to compare what you believe. Or what culture has told you. Or what people who are not born again have told you. You compare it with the mind of God. We buy into the mind of God. By opening up ourselves to the word of God. Why do we study the word of God? Why are we so passionate about the word of God? Because we desire to know what he intends for us. And if it does not look like what we are seeing, we have the ability to petition heaven and say, Father, you are thinking something else and my life is reflecting something else. It is, if you do not know the word of God, what are you praying then? Because the word of God becomes... The legal basis for you approaching heaven. There is a disparity between what you are thinking and what is happening. Something is threatening your majesty and your might. As mighty as you are, you are thinking good. And yet I'm seeing evil in my life. And God says there is need to correct it. Someone is changing the equation somewhere. And he said an enemy has done this. Now you can pray and engage all the forces that were given to believers to command victory through intelligence because you have detected by knowledge that something is wrong. If you do not know what he has said, you will not even know what is wrong with your own life. Listen, if we are seated here right now and there is a rule in this place that every time we gather here, a bottle of minerals, for instance, or soft drink, and maybe muffins or meat pie should be given to everyone you are aware if you sit down here and you count two three hours and nothing is coming you have a right based on that knowledge to find out who is responsible because i am aware but if you are not aware you can sit down there for a long time they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness why because they do not know the thoughts of God. So the devil can come and tell you it is the will of God for you to be a mediocre. It is the will of God for you to do ministry as if God did not call you. It is the will of God for you to fail. It is the will of God for death to sweep everyone in the family. And you say it's true. That ignorance is because you do not know who God is. So the word of God explains to us the thoughts and the intents of God. Are we blessed? Number three. The word of God is a revelation of his system of operation. Please pay attention. We've discussed three things now. That the word of God is God, an expression of himself. Number two, that the word of God is a revelation of his thoughts and his character. Now number three, the word of God is a revelation of his system of operation, his ways, his methodology. Psalm 25 from verse 4 and 5. 
Psalm 25 from verse 4 and 5. Show me thy ways, O God, he says. Teach me thy paths. Next verse. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. Unto thee will I wait all day long. He said, teach me thy ways. Teach me thy ways. Psalms 103 verse 7. Please give it to us quickly. Psalms 103 and verse 7. He made known his ways unto Moses. He made known his ways unto Moses. Now please look up. I had the privilege of enjoying a wonderful meal when we arrived. Wonderful meal. And by the way, it was, it was I think one day I will return here by myself and invite myself just not to come and preach but to come and patronize the kind of wonderful meal and the juices that we have enjoyed. But now watch this. It's one thing for me to enjoy it. I don't know how it was made. I only know it was good. The trouble is, the day the person who made it is not there, I'm in trouble. If that person really wants to help me, more than giving me the food and the juices, they can call me to the kitchen and say, let me show you how it is made. Now I'm not afraid of my results because the secret of reproducing it is now with me. God does not only want to give you miracle signs and wonders. He wants to call you to the inner chambers of the spirit and say, let me show you how miracles happen. Let me show you how results happen in this kingdom. Listen, look up. Do you know why stories in the Bible are so long and every detail is captured? It's not just the result God wants you to see. He wants you to study how the results happen. The things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. And hope makes not a shame. As a man of God, I can pray for you. Be healed, be blessed. May your church expand. May you increase. You will be afraid of that result and then you will not be able to mentor and raise others because you don't even understand the dynamics of that result. So the word of God teaches us the methodologies of the kingdom. Like a chef calling you into the kitchen and say, let me teach you how this mysterious food that you see, let me break it down. First, you start with water. Don't worry whether I'm right or wrong. Second, you start with whatever. Third, you start with this and then leave this for five minutes. Then you make it, make a few mistakes. He said, no problem, let's do it again. They are not just teaching you to eat. They are teaching you how to cook well. There are women here, even if they want to cook for 1,000 people, you are not afraid because of mastery. You understand how to do this thing, you are not afraid. Listen to me. We become matured and we become masters in this kingdom when we are able to handle the word of truth, when we understand the dynamics of how results happen in the kingdom. So if someone comes for counseling as a matured believer, not just a man of God, as a matured believer, you can immediately diagnose his problem and you can recommend it like a doctor. When you are speaking to a doctor, doctor, I started shivering this morning, then I had headache, then joint pains, he starts laughing because there is mastery. He, has, he, he, he was not just taught how to administer drugs. He was taken to a class and shown that these symptoms mean this. So while you are talking, he can even be making a call while he's listening to you. That's how much he has gained mastery. And he will recommend a drug and not call you up to check up on you. He's sure that you'll be fine. Two days after taking that drug, you say, doctor, he said, don't worry, just keep taking it. And after five days, you are running around playing football. Mastery. When you understand this, someone can come and say, poverty is destroying my family. And now you are a blessing. You say, I know. Carry your pen and paper. Write the following scriptures. I know what is wrong. And I know how. We... You are not a blessing if you do not know the ways of God. You can't be able to help people in a methodical way. Mentorship is based on this body of truth that lifts believers. There is a methodical approach to the growth and the maturity of the saints. This is what doctrine is all about. The course curriculum that makes for the growth of the saints is called doctrine. Are you learning anything tonight? Apostle, 
I know God works miracles, but I don't know why I don't see it in my life. The word of God can teach you how miracles happen. Apostle, I know God favors, but I've never seen this favor in my life. The word of God says, come, don't look at the result. Let me show you how it happened. I know the word of God can impart faith, but I don't know how it is. Then he says, let me use a figure. Look unto Abraham, your father. Understudy him. Understudy Esther to lend favor. Understudy Abraham to lend faith. Understudy Elijah to lend prayer. There are portraits that lead to exact spiritual results. You can study them and learn. Apostle, what I have is not enough. I know that what I have is not enough. You go to the word of God. What did Jesus do with what is not enough? Number one, he gave thanks. So stop complaining. Any, any time you complain about what is not enough, you have killed the potential for increase. Are you seeing how the word of God cultures us now? Oh, apostle, there's no, I don't have this enough. I don't, no, 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 no. Give thanks. Give thanks. Lord, I thank you that I even have the fees for one of my child. I know that I need for five of them. But you are the one who has given me this one. And I am grateful. And God says, this is for me. Now you are ready to turn your five loaf and your two fish to feed 5,000 people. It's a formula. So those who are thankful, dancing and celebrating God every time. There may not be anything at home and yet they are rejoicing. You see them testifying miracles upon miracles because they are engaging an exact spiritual formula. Please look at me. One of the major reasons why we press for the word of God is because we want to know how God operates. You are a man of God here. You are trusting God for increase maybe. In your, in your church, you are trusting God for increase greater souls. You go back. How did increase happen in the kingdom? The formula again. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw. Paul can plant, Apollo can water, but increase is exclusively of God. So the more Jesus is revealed and lifted in your life and in your congregation, then you see that he will begin to draw men. Are you seeing how this thing works? Question. Now that you are seated here, if you look at your life, you see the gaps in your results. You must go to the Bible. I am, I seem not to be prayerful. My prayer life seems to have died. Don't feel discouraged. You go to scripture, you search. Where did resurrection happen as far as someone's prayer life is concerned? I don't know if prayer is powerful. Go to scripture and find out. Two instances to show you the power of prayer. Number one, Isaiah 18, Hezekiah, who turned a verdict, God's own verdict. Nobody in that rendition was fake. The prophet was real, God was real, the verdict was true, yet prayer changed it. So is prayer powerful? Yes, sir. Next expression, Luke 18 from verse 1. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Sin 1. It talks about a wicked man. There was in a city a widow. A judge. May you never meet this kind of judge. A judge who does not fear God. You can't say God sent me to you. And does not regard men. You can't say this man said you should. No. And then the Bible now talks of a widow. A widow is a woman who had system of defense has been taken away. So it's contrasting two people to show you the power of prayer. She went to him and said, avenge me my adversary. And the Bible says for a time he would not. And then here's what the man said. By her continual coming, her importunity. He said, though I do not fear God nor regard man. But this woman will weary me. That means when you pray, there is an effect in the spirit. Even though you are not seen, the strongest of forces. When you are consistent in prayer, eventually... The Bible talks about Elijah in James chapter 5. Begin to read from verse 16 down that Elijah was a man of like passion. But he prayed earnestly and changed climatic conditions. It was not a parable. It actually happened. 
Now, by those scriptures, you now know that prayer is powerful. So when you go to pray, you are not hoping, will God answer? Can it really change this situation? The word of God has shown you how God works. You may be in a pit and a situation. Maybe you are in debt. You are in trouble. Can God deliver? Go to the world to learn his ways. The worst kind of trouble that a man can find in this life is to be in the belly of a fish. And the Bible says there was a human being like that one day on earth as we are seated here. Someone was one day in the belly of the fish and he said, I will still not die. I can determine my destiny. What else is left when you are in the belly of the fish? For you, you've not entered. You are still breathing. You are still standing. And yet you are hopeless. A man is already in the belly of the fish. Digestion is about to start. Jonah said, fish, you are joking. You don't know who created me. I may not understand your digestive system. But I assure you, it's not me you will swallow. Jonah's story teaches us that there is nothing called hopeless. Nothing called hopeless. One of the three Hebrew boys who were thrown in fire and their chains were loosed and the appearance of the fourth was like the son of the living God. And the Bible says these were men who the fire had no power on. What of Acts chapter 12? You read about the story of Peter bound hand and chain after they killed James. But prayers was offered of the church unto God for him and Bible says a miracle began to happen an angel came and opened all those doors there is no situation called hopeless you see when you study scripture you learn the ways of God and you know that God is not only a mighty God but there is how he delivers you follow what they do at midnight Paul and Silas prayed they did not pray when they were outside of the prison. So there's no excuse for not praying. Lord, I'm depressed. Mm -mm. They prayed with chains. They even sang. You don't pray and sing when you are delivered. You pray and sing to be delivered. I'll sing unto the Lord. For he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. That's the song of Miriam. When they saw the mighty hand of God, a pillar of cloud by day, fire by night, Red Sea at the instance of his word. And Miriam said, no, we can't just pass. Let us write a song after this experience. I will sing unto the Lord. For he has triumphed gloriously The horses and its riders Have been thrown into the sea So when someone says Your family will never rise You look at him and sing the same song I'll sing unto the Lord For he has triumphed gloriously The horses and its riders Have been thrown into the sea Word of God a manifestation of God himself the Word of God a revelation of the thoughts and the intents of God the Word of God as a revelation of his methodologies his ways the way results are produced in the kingdom the way influence happens the way prosperity happens. Apostle, I'm trusting God to lift me to rise to a higher level of influence for the sake of the kingdom. Go to the Bible then. How did influence happen? Study the life of Joseph. How did a prisoner suddenly become a prime minister? How did a slave girl called Hadassah suddenly become a queen? Study their lives. Find the keys for growth there. Listen. Every time you study scriptures to learn the ways of God, there are three things you are going to find. Number one, promises. Number two, principles. Number three, prophecies. You must find these three as you study scripture. Number one, again, promises. 
God's commitment towards you. Number two, principles. The keys of the kingdom that are responsible for the various dimensions of results that translate into our dominion. And then number three, prophecy. A foreknowledge of the things that will happen to give us hope and to give us assurance. Because if our hope is only in this life, the Bible declares that we are of all men most miserable. Is God helping us tonight? Let me round up therefore as we pray by revealing maybe we can just take one for tonight there are four things four dimensions of power that are contained in the word of God the word of God is powerful but there are four dimensions of power at least contained in the word of God are you ready please we may just have one and then we'll pray is God blessing us tonight the first dimension of power that is contained in the word of God is the power to create. Hebrews 11 verse 3 To create from the earth's definition means to make something out of nothing. To create from the realm of the spirit means to transport realities and make them manifest here. The creative power of God's word. Hebrews 11 verse 3 through faith we understand that the walls were framed that means they had their physical expression by the word of God so that the things which were not made which were made seen were not made of things which do appear that means the raw material of the things we see today they came from the realm of the spirit The word of God has power to create. John chapter 1 and verse 3. John chapter 1 verse 3. We have looked at the word of what the word of God is. Now we are looking at the dimensions of power. There are four dimensions of power contained in the word of God. Number one is the power to create. John 1 3. All things. Someone say all things. One more time. Please shout it. Say all things. All things your finance is part of all things listen to me your family is part of all things anything the Word of God cannot make cannot be made anything the Word of God cannot make cannot be made the Bible says all things were made by him and without him without him means outside of his influence was not anything made that was made so when they look at you and say, how did you rise? You know the answer. The word of God. There is the lifting power of his word. Listen to me. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, I speak to someone here. The things that your destiny needs that have not yet manifested by the power of the word, I decree and declare, may you see them begin to appear in your life. sit down the word of God can create it can make what has no business happening in your life to happen Saul had no business becoming a prophet Saul had no business receiving bread from visitors but a word came from God through a prophet you will be on your way going you will find three men holding two loaf of bread. They bought that bread to go home with it. But because a word is upon your life, they will bow to you and give you. The word of God can create. Listen. Strip every man of anything he has. His houses, cars, everything. But give him the word of God and say go. That man did not lose. As he's going from all over the earth, whatever his destiny needs, the word of God like a magnet. You don't pick needles one by one. That's too laborious. Find a powerful magnet. Pass it on the ground. Everything that is magnetic must follow it. That's what happens to you. When the word of God is upon your life, 
thank you when the word of God is upon your life immediately listen carefully everything at all that should be for life and godliness so this is how it starts come can I use you my brother watch this this gentleman may have come from a family with no advantage a family with no lifting can anything good come out of this family then he sits down and as the word of God is coming he does not even know what is happening to him as he begins to move favor meets him on the way lifting meets him on the way destiny help us meet him on the way three years of sitting with the word he turns back and he said where did you get them from the word of God brought them looking for those things by themselves will be a journey of frustration one thing is needful matter matter you are worried and offended by this one thing is needful if you can sit at the master's table the word of God exhibits magnetic properties it's on you and while you are roaming around find a way of believing what I have to say it's true the word of God can change you in ancient times when fathers wanted to bless their children they didn't bless them with physical things they would those they gave physical things to were those who they did not consider important so they would say okay take this take that then they'll call the sons inside and say look if I give you physical things I'm a wicked father I give you something go, go. the person will go and return back with cattle return back with plenty the word of God everything that must appear in your life I'm standing in the name of Jesus and I'm speaking to you everything that you need for your spiritual life for your finances you have prayed you have done all you know to do I stand in the name of Jesus whose I am and who sent me here I declare some of you even before tomorrow may it appear in your life please sit down let's round up Colossians 1 16 that would be our final scripture for tonight please do not miss any of the sessions I'll be showing you what the power of God contains the dimensions of power and then we are going to be praying hopefully before the session maybe the final session we'll have the opportunity to pray for the sick speak over our lives and impart graces an impartation is a transference of possibilities it's part of the apostolic ministry that every time God grants a privilege to come across a region by the election of grace there will be a deposit of divine realities so that men within the territory in greater levels will be on fire manifesting possibilities that will bring glory to the name of the Lord Colossians 1 16 please read with me everyone ready read one to read for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be mm -hmm, dominions principalities all things the creative power all things all things all things favor all things lifting all things supernatural manifestation all things let me tell you this if God decides that I'm creating a brand new possibility for you he can use anything even stones anything you've sat here tonight learning the ways of God first finding your passion to know God the more for some of you more than the teaching tonight the Lord is cultivating in you a hunger for spiritual things so that you will begin to love him 
and you will begin to cry some of you will go back after this conference and you say Lord reveal yourself again to me I'm tired of playing religion I'm tired of just writing my exams by myself and marking the script there is, only, there is so much I need to know it's a holy provocation don't fight it it's challenging you those who bear fruit he prunes so that they will bear more fruit because hear me there are many destinies that are connected to you as you are listening to me. And if you stop at this level, there are destinies that will be destroyed. So more than what you are hearing, you must go back. Fight the spirit that has killed your prayer life. Fight the spirit that has killed your word life. Some of you, your passion for the word, here and there, you may just watch a 10 minutes video on YouTube. Go back now with a renewed passion. I now see what the devil has been fighting. My authority in the kingdom. Because it is through knowledge the just shall del be delivered. We rise up in this kingdom by revelation. Please rise up on your feet. In one minute, I'd like you to just pray in the spirit and cry asking the Lord for grace. Please just help those under the anointing. We are wrapping up already for the night. Help them, please. Help them. Whether you are an usher or not, let someone just help them. Are you praying? Someone pray. You came for a conference. You don't have to bring them out. Just help them so they don't injure themselves. Please pray. Prayer fire, word fire, afresh, oh God, upon my life. Is someone praying? Prayer fire, word fire. hallelujah hallelujah now please listen to me our time is up i have just about three minutes here and we're done before we pray the second prayer and i speak over your life you are here and you came here for this conference of the balcony following online or here in the main auditorium you are saying apostle whilst i heard you preach the holy ghost began to speak to me that I must take the issue of my salvation seriously. That you've never genuinely made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. There are others who are saying, Apostle, I remember giving my heart to the Lord. But as it stands, my life has gone haywire. I need a genuine commitment. I'm going to count one to four for time's sake. Wherever you are, run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here. One. Two. Don't be ashamed. Run. Run to Jesus. He gives us a new beginning. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Join them. Join them. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. Your life is about to change. For God so loved the world, the Bible says, He proved that love by giving. He's a giver. Love gives. I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back I have decided to follow